He told me, we're very proud of the ministry we have here. We've worked very hard to build a well-oiled machine. He went on to describe what I could only assume to be parts of his machine and asked if I could like to be a part of his ministry. And I wish he hadn't asked. You see, some people build ministry like a well-oiled machine. They put in all their time, their money, and their people in hopes the machine will produce the right product, the right person, the right number. Beware. When your ministry becomes a well-oiled machine, for machines have not hearts. And some people build ministry like a well-oiled machine that keeps breaking down. They put in all their time, their money, and their people, and the machine will not produce. Take courage, my friends. It is still a machine. And machines have not hearts. Machines have no need for miracles. They only ask for miracles and then operate in ways to make miracles unnecessary. Machines are built with big budgets and bigger buildings, and I wish I could write these words in Braille so someone could feel what I'm saying. You don't need God to build a machine. But worship is for the broken ones, smart enough to know how foolish they are. It is for the ones who have tried and found life lacking, but are not content to confess that this is all there is. It is for those wearied of wondering if our crying hearts might drown us, but know that our tears are telescopes to heaven, looking through trembling lenses for hope and deeper senses of hope. It is for those who will step out onto nothing, hoping to land on something, because accepting that you are accepted is a perception of yourself not everyone can afford. It is for the wobbly and the weak me who have let loose the luxury of denying the handout of amazing grace. Worship is for those who chose a path. Though straight and narrow is still rugged and beaten, you are still on the right path. Worship is for the fluent confessor who can never match the projections of the pious, but know that perfection is a gangly wire no one could ever walk. It is for the child who holds that heaven is full of five-year-olds, sparing themselves the futility of proving themselves to people who will never speak your language. Have cartoons, have boo-boos, have daddy I love you. Three halves, make one more than whole. Do not accept yourself as you are, as you should be, but as you are, because you will never be as you should be. Quit rinsing your filthy rags in gas station bathrooms as if hand soap and make believe will make them believe that you belong, that you belong. You belong to a kingdom, belonging to people not trying to be cleaner than they are. You belong. And worship is for the sin soaked and the broken, who are loved and outspoken, knowing that unworthy is not the same as worthless. Worship is for the paupers, who have made peace with their flaws. It is for those who have prayed in silence, but have never ceased to pray. Worship is for you. Do not for one second take your gift for granted. Make sure your gift is contagious, because while it is yours to have, it is only valuable and it's giving away. Make sure your every conversation leaves a sensation of love. Because this is where the mighty descend and the lowly rise. To the prize that we all pray is standing on the lip of the Grand Canyon with a contagious tour guide telling you to look at this, look at that, look at this, look at that. And if the Grand Canyon is only a faint glimpse of God's glory, you have to wonder what must he be like. You are not a worship singer. You are not a backup vocalist. You are not a drummer, bassist, or a sound tech. You are a worship 